Hi guys, I hope you enjoyed part number one with my talk with Luca Lampariello. I personally think it was super insightful and useful. And today's part number two. I would be delighted if you could leave a like, subscribe and leave a message down below and share what you thought about this video and the last one. Thanks a lot to my patrons and if you're ready, let's get started. A very important question is, it's not when did you start learning, but how much time did you spend learning on average over the yes. last four years, three years? So in my case, it's been more or less an hour a day, every single day at the beginning, 30 minutes, then one hour, 15 minutes, then it went down a little bit. Uh, yeah. But on average, 45, 60 minutes every single day, uh, because this is, this is the, first, uh, the first language. Well, it's a new language. Um, I really like I call it the metaphor, metaphor of the family or the family metaphor. Okay. When you learn new languages, um, imagine having a family of like seven kids, right? Yeah. So first start you and your partner, then you have the first uh, newborn is a new language. Yeah. Then you have another one. Then you have another one. Then the first one becomes a teenager, right? Yeah. And then becomes an adult. So what happens is that with the new the newborn, you have to take care of the newborn much more than the others. Yeah. Like as the others progress, you know, the teenager is about to leave home, still depends on your on the money, etc. But and, and then when you have seven of them, well, maybe the adults they can take care of themselves, even if you don't yeah. talk to them, you know, very often. They're left home, they call you mom, yeah. how's it going? But the newborn or the newborns, like imagine having two kids, maybe twins, then you have to take care of that much more. Yeah, twins is very difficult or like three, you know, uh, triplets, I think it's called. That's why I say I would never start three or two languages at the same time. Like, yes, because uh, it's like it's a lot. Well, <laughs> um, and yes, some people this do. Makes but it's also a lot. the question, like, how do you maintain so many languages? Because if, if I'm not wrong, you speak like 14 languages. Right. Now, how do you do it? I, I actually watch one video. I am curious <laughs> to see if this is still like where you said, like, you know, in the kitchen, I speak polish like yeah. it's things like that <laughs> that, that, that's pretty cool so so just to give an example um first of all i think that in order to maintain languages um you have to structure your life somehow around them or you have to make sure that you use them on a day on a daily basis because otherwise if you're just trying to learn every single language every day that's going to be extremely um difficult uh, it, it, it's yeah, going to yeah. suck all your energy so here's here's what i do first of all i made the fateful decision of making languages part of my life because yeah. I work with languages. So just to give you an idea of, uh, let's say over a week to give you a very concrete example, there's languages that I use every day. English, mm -hmm. I use it on a daily basis. It's everywhere. I have to write articles, make YouTube videos, uh, talk with my team, international team. So it's a language I use all the time. I watch YouTube videos. I read books every single day in uh, in english so it's a language that i use two three even five hours a day every wow, single day yeah. mm -hmm. because i work with with english yeah. so then italian i live in italy although truth be told i don't speak italian that much um, meaning yes when i go buy stuff and when i go out but uh, i think what really counts is what you do at home rather than outside yeah. Um, but I use Italian quite often. It's my native language. Uh, French, I use it. So, and here's when it, it's going to start getting interested. I have habits where I connect mm -hmm. a place, an activity, and a language all together. So for me, French, if I don't, I speak French also when I go out and I have a few friends, but at home, I mainly listen to French every single day. France 24, which is this channel, ah, international yeah. channel, every single day when I cook. So before eating, I always listen to France 24 for at least 15 minutes. So that's my habit yeah. for French. Every single day for 15 minutes. Occasionally, I also use the language with my friends, etc. WhatsApp, because I have a lot of friends from yeah. friends. Yeah. Do uh, you also do like self-talk? Like, will you listen to it and then just say something in French to yourself? Like, I know it's weird, but I do that. Yes, I do that. I all, think it helps. <laughs> I do. I do that all the time. Um, okay, cool. But mainly what I do is I, I mainly get input. So, again, mm -hmm. France is... Uh, France 24. France 24 is what I listen to, or I listen to a podcast in Russian. So it's French or Russian in the kitchen. So oh, yeah. BBC okay. Russian is really interesting. They have podcasts every day. And I listen to, on not on a daily basis, but very often listen to that. So oh, cool. it's Russian and, and French. Then I have Polish. Polish is more at night. I listen to, I have a... I have, um, uh, I, I can use the Gazeta Wyborcza, which is a famous, um, you know... Um, cool. 
and I, I use it all the time and listen to podcasts. And I, uh, my ex girlfriend is uh, from Poland, and I've been I spoke Polish for seven years at home. So that mm-hmm. uh, you know that made a difference. I use I used to uh, use it all the time. Uh, yeah. And then um, I have other languages. German, I didn't use it that much, but I, I read the Der Spiegel almost on a, on oh, a daily yeah. basis in the bathroom. <laughs> so oh, ma- okay. you got the magazines in the bathroom. I don't want to ask how long. <laughs> no. <you know? laughs> okay. Well, around 10, 15 minutes, but it's it's okay. a habit. And, 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 yeah. and, and one big component of habits is making things visible. If you have something that is visible and you see oh, it, yeah. oh, that's a big reminder of, oh, the Der Spiegel is just next to, you know, it's yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, this is, I don't know if you've read Atomic Habits. Like, this is one of my favorite books. Of course, yes. And yeah, if you like want to start exercising, just leave your, you know, exercise clothing, whatever, next to whatever your work yes. or whatever so just leave it there that is visible <laughs> if you want to go on a diet just don't buy the stuff that you're not supposed to be eating like it's very basic but it's just helpful yeah it, it's basically designing your environment so i design my yeah. apartments so that i use six or seven languages every day on a daily basis these are uh, also the languages that i speak the best it's, it's like italian english french spanish german Russian and Polish. So these languages cool. I use it on a weekly basis, and then you have the languages that I have to sit down and learn uh, actively, and that's a different matter. But these mm-hmm. are two different systems. I see them two different systems. So you design your life, you design your environment, both micro, which is at home, micro environment, macro, which is outside with friends, huh. going out, etc. That also plays a role when it comes to speaking. So input at home, speaking outside, using the language cool. outside. And I'm very curious because you were talking about how you've started learning Turkish. You have a very defined system that you now use for all languages. But I I don't know, you said you started learning English when you were 10. So I was wondering, how how did it change over time? Like, how did you approach English when you were 10 years old? And like, does it contrast happily with the, probably does in your case. But yeah, I would be interested to hear about that. Well, let's let's say that my way of learning languages has changed dramatically, especially when it comes to English. I was a disaster. I still remember um, I used to say inaug because Italians read as, the, you know, they, they ah, speak as okay. inaug instead of enough. To, to, ah, okay. I didn't even get what you were... Of yeah, course, you because meant. if I say inaug, you go like, what? what is inaug? So I remember the face, uh, the expression on the face of my teacher, my private teacher, Susan, and she was like, what do you mean? That was the first time I tried to talk to her. I was very frustrated. I was 12 and I've been mm-hmm. learning English for two years at school. Uh, and I would say not very well, uh, unfortunately. So I was convinced that I was not good enough at learning languages like wow. a lot of us. So I thought, okay, languages are not for me. My English teacher was... Wow, a, you thought that? Wow. Yeah, I was, I was 12. I had never learned a language before and I was not good at English or French. Then... Okay. My parents decided to hire a tutor, an American uh, okay. uh, tutor. Oh, that's cool. And I talk about this in the book, uh, which I'm going to publish in a few days on Amazon Ooh. too. That's, uh, there's an image. I have it. I should have it somewhere. I don't know where it is. But anyway, I talk about the story. And it, Susan changed everything because she just showed me that language learning is not about chores. It's not about homework. It's about having fun. So yeah, uh, cool. what really changed was this huge mindset thing where I started learning English with I, I, I still remember I used to wake up, I was super excited to say, oh, today I'm going to do English because English was not wow. connected and associated in my mind with homework anymore. It was watching movies, having conversations, like selecting interesting yeah, uh, articles cool. and talking about it. And in two years, my English was completely transformed. And I remember that three, actually three years later, at the ripe age of 15, I went to Ireland and they called me the American. So... That wow. was the big change between Inaug and being mistaken for an native speaker <laughs> three years down the line. And uh, that goes to show that I, when people tell me, for example, oh, Luca, you must be a genius. It's a, it's a, classic, ex- like, it's a classic excuse of people yes. saying, oh, you must, have, you must be so talented. I'm not talented. So it's a very so dangerous exercise. So I will exercise. not try and we'll just keep that's saying exa- you're that's talented. That's exactly right. Yeah. It's a very different, it's a very dangerous exercise. It's a very dangerous um, limiting belief that puts, that where you create two categories and you put yourself in the category of the, the loser's category. Oh, I'm a loser, so I will never learn language. So, yeah, and so, you won't try anyway if you think That's like exactly that, right. So, so uh, my, 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 mes- my mission and my message for everyone who's listening is that 
If you're learning a foreign language, if you speak your own native language well, you can learn any other language. It's just a matter of knowing how to do it. It's a, I, I call it the fundamental three pillars of acquiring any skill, mindset, skill set, and organization skills. These are the yeah. three things that really count in acquiring any skill. Susan Kruger is a famous psychologist that talks about this. It's like it's called the, the three pillars of success when it comes to acquiring any skill. Mm. So mindset, mindset is your mindset. Yeah. Skill set is the strategies or techniques that you use, the technical stuff that, you know, how you actually acquire yeah. that skill. And then the organization is how do you organize your time and energy and focus in order to make that happen. Would you say that they're all equally important or would you say, well, skill set, it doesn't really matter how you do it. If you have the other two, you'll be fine. Unfortunately, I think you should have all three aligned because okay. if you if you have a great mindset, but you have poor strategies, then you're going to it's going to it's going to be tough to learn a language. If you have a great mindset and you have great strategies, but you don't know how to organize your time well, maybe you can start learning, but then it's going to crash and burn. Or if yeah. you have great organizational skills, but you don't have mindset or skill set, then it's not going to happen. So you have to have these three. I think you have to have these three okay. aligned one way or another in order to to succeed long term in acquiring any skill. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah, I never thought about it like that. Like for me, it's like, okay, you need passion and you need um, yeah, and system. You need, yeah, like you talked system. about routine. So yeah. and routines, but actually, yeah, the method is important, actually. Yeah, so actually, you're right. Um, because um, you were mentioning also that you were frustrated at school when learning English, right? And um, you thought you weren't able to do it. So I think it's an interesting topic. Like, how are children learning at school? Maybe it has changed, but uh, my experience was similar. Like, I don't feel like I learned English at school. I think it, I learned a little bit there, but I learned mostly with, yeah, with books, with music, with movies. So... Um, how do you think that the polyglot community can impact how children learn at school? Do you think we have any power at all <laughs> over the, that? The, like to change the school system in the sense that, you know, kids are learning English for years. They, they say, how did you say enough? And I, I didn't know how to say enough, like the way you said it. But like, it's like, dude something's not working well i don't know what are your thoughts on this so very very interesting question we could talk uh for hours about this because education is is my the, the main you know purpose of my life um yeah. i w but before we address that i just wanted to go back to the question you asked me before about how to uh how my, how i approach uh, a language how i approach the english uh, versus turkish now and i would say break, oh, yeah. breaking I it down D right. don't worry don't worry M breaking it down into mindset skill set and organization i would say that that back in the day to make a comparison like using these categories mindset when I was learning English I was convinced I was not good at learning languages when I started learning Turkish now in 2024 I know for a fact that I've learned many languages successfully and it, Turkish is going to be just another language that I'm going to add to my repertoire so to speak so mindset my mindset has completely changed when it comes yeah. to skill set the way I was dealing with English unfortunately uh, like many other um, classmates, was just to try to do exercises, grammar exercises, very focused yeah. on grammar. Learn by heart. Learn yeah. by heart, learning vocabulary, learning different pieces of the language without learning it holistically. Now, nowadays, I have this technique, the bidirectional translation as a beginner, where I learn the language holistically by translating back and forth. And I know that you have to learn a skill, not just mm -hmm. learn factual knowledge. So it's acquiring a skill and also knowledge uh, because uh, we learn, we have two different systems in our brain. One is, it's called declarative memory. The other one is procedural memory. Unfortunately, in school, we just learn facts. We don't learn to develop skills as, as children do. And lastly, well, I'm simplifying here. There's mm -hmm. more to that than meets the eye. And lastly, organization. I did not have any organization. I learned, I, I learned t twice a week because and I had to learn in class for maybe an hour uh, a week, and yeah. then I did not do much after that, which is a disaster. Now I know for a fact that I have a system in place and I have habits. So yeah. I anchor habits. So brush your teeth. After I brush my teeth, I sit down and I learn Turkish. It's not exactly this way, but it's in yeah, the morning. Yeah. You know, I have an entire set of habits and I know mm -hmm. how to do that. So it's, it's completely changed. It's just like, yeah, completely changed. Wow, interesting. Now, to go back to your question, yeah. we're opening a can of worms, as they say, because I can talk <laughs> yes. for hours about this topic. I would say that here, here's, here's, the, here's the main problem. 
Education is done, is delivered backwards. What does it mean? Uh, if you think about it, it's not just language learning. What happens is it's that this, this, is a par yeah. this is a classic paradigm that dates back to the Industrial Revolution. It's a paradigm that hasn't changed over the last 200 years, and it works the following way. We give you, let's say, let's, let's talk about mathematics and let's talk about language learning. Different, but in a way similar. What happens when you learn mathematics or physics? They give you a theory, they give you exercises, you learn the theory, you apply the exercises. In language learning, they give you grammar rules, you apply the exercises in order to understand, yeah. right? Uh, but in reality, the human brain just learns by solving real life problems. So you have a problem, your brain learns better when you're giving, you give a kid a problem, like solving it, for example, you give a text. Like you're going to the supermarket and how going much it's going to cost or whatever. That's yeah. exactly by experience, but when it comes to intellectual understanding, like you're trying to acquire a no some knowledge or a skill, language learning, you can give a text, for example, in Italian, one in Latin, and they try to dissect yeah. the text by translation. That is problem solving. But uh, you know, and it's not really, you know, it's not critical thinking. So it's, it's not cr well. Critical thinking is is also another matter. But in general, uh, I think that the the problem is that the the entire system is very flawed, and a lot of people know about that. They talk about that. Um, Doctor, I think it's Robinson. He made an amazing TED talk about education, how it's done backwards, and how to um, foster creativity. Uh, but that's that's a problem. Now, things are changing. I think mm -hmm. that what we can do as polyglots or like educators is to set an example and t talk about it as much as possible, spread what yeah. as much as possible. This is the thing we can do. Uh, I don't think we can work on a, you know, government, like we yeah. are not gonna change the way governments uh, actually implement educational paradigms, but uh, we can set the example, things are changing. Uh, one thing that really uh, warms my heart uh, when I think about all the toil and sweat I went through when creating a YouTube channel and all the stuff I've been doing over the last 14 years is when people stop me on the street and they tell Aww. me, you changed my life. And you say, before wow. I, I was learning this way, now I've changed it. I morphed into, I've morphed into this person. That's, that's, that's really the thing. Cool. That's the thing that fills my heart and that makes me, makes me realize I'm doing the right thing. And that's what I wanted to do in life. You know? Yeah, that's great. Oh, that sounds wonderful. Yeah. That's what? cool. I mean, we all need to, yeah, just do whatever you think would be great globally, just on your own scale. And I mean, you do have lots of influence, but yeah, you cannot change the Italian school system. <laughs> I cannot, but I can do... In, you can uh, show how, how to do it. I, yeah, <laughs> but people are noticing. People are noticing, yeah, people so are things noticing. are going to change. But I'm just, I, I just slowly, can do what maybe, I can but, do. Slowly, yeah. slowly, but we're going in the right direction. I That's think. cool. Awesome. Um, is there anything else you would like to share before we just share maybe also where to find you and everything like that? All sure. Um, so uh, you can find me on Luca Lampariello. If you write Luca Lampariello on Google, you will find lucalampariello.com, which is my website. And it happens to be also the academy where you can get the courses by my book, cool. the ebook and everything else. We have two courses in English, two courses in Spanish. And then... Um, my YouTube channel is Luca Lampariello. And yeah, you can we just will write leave it Luca also in the description and the comments down below. Yeah, awesome. And, and one last thing I wanted to say, uh, just as an encouragement for those who are listening to us, maybe they're learning a language, maybe they're learning two languages, is that languages can change your life. It's not just, you know, if you know English, that's great, but every language that you learn is not just another skill, it's not just a set of words and sentences, is just a different way of living and interpreting reality. Uh, languages have changed yeah. my life in ways I could not even fathom, like back in the day, 20, mm -hmm. 30 years ago. And it's always, always worth pursuing any language and knowing, investing time and learning how to do that because yeah. you can learn any language. You, you're equipped with an amazing brain. So it, it just opens up, you know, so many doors for you. Like I feel, I actually, started learning Swedish because I liked how it sounded and I have a friend who speaks Swedish so I thought why not and then I discovered I don't know if you know it a simple Swedish podcast it's like a B1 or something yes. like that and Frederick he's a very nice guy I met and him also, I met he, him yes. I met him too I met him in Barcelona it was funny um so but you know he talks about such interesting topics that at some point it's not like I need to, or I want to listen to Swedish. It's like, hey, let's see what Frederick is talking about today. Yes, you know? that's exactly right. And it's like, wow. And 
it just opens up. And sometimes I'm also, I find some resources, or I find some podcast episode, whatever, that's super interesting. And I'm like, I would like to share it with this or that person. And I'm like, oh, that person doesn't speak that language. And I'm not pretending like it's not like I'm better. It's just like, what a pity not to have access to that, you know. Just, Absolutely. Absolutely. So that, that's Absolutely. how I feel about it, too. And also, Absolutely. sometimes I get bored or, uh, about learning a language, like the thing, like the thing itself, like language learning. But then I'm reminded that through languages, you can access so much knowledge and so many things that were not accessible to you so whenever I feel frustrated like oh I don't want to learn this or that I'm just like well I'll just look up something interesting in that language you know and then it's I get motivated I don't know if that happens to you too yeah all the time every single day <laughs> yeah <laughs> every okay, single cool. day <laughs> amazing <laughs> Luca thank, thanks a lot it was awesome to have you here guys if you have any questions we haven't covered maybe just leave them down below and yeah I hope to see you all very soon thank you Thanks, Thank Luca. Have a nice day. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.